Hello, it is April 18th, 2020. I'm still reading in the book of Hebrews and enjoying it thoroughly as I've been taking my time uh, reading it, looking at things and studying things out, taking note of certain things. And this morning came across a little two word phrase that struck my eye, caught my interest. And um, that phrase is the two words, let us, let us. So I did a little looking in the book of Hebrews and found that that phrase actually shows up 13 times in the book of Hebrews. That were those words, let us, let us. And by using that terminology, the writer of Hebrews is reminding us that we ourselves have certain personal responsibilities toward God that will only happen if we choose ourselves to do them if we choose to fulfill them. Now, we know God has certain responsibilities and certain things that he does that happen regardless of what it is we do. But that phrase, let us, reminds us that there are certain things that will only happen if we choose to do them. Now, the first of those phrases shows up back in Hebrews chapter number four, and we're going to look at that this morning. Hebrews chapter four, verse number one, the writer of Hebrews tells us, let us therefore fear lest a promise being less left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Let us therefore fear, the writer writes here. Now, just the other day, I spoke on overcoming the spirit of fear and or countering the spirit of fear. And by that, what I was referring to is the spirit of fear that comes into us and drives us to do things we would normally not do in a rational way. But what this is talking about here, when it says, let us therefore fear, is it's telling us there is a certain type of fear that we need to choose to have. And that is a fear of the Lord, a very healthy, very spiritual fear. If we were to go back into the Old Testament, we could find over and over again this concept of the fear of the Lord, both in the book of Psalms and the book of Proverbs. It is very, very prevalent. And that is a reminder to us of who it is we are in the light of God, who God is, and what his expectations are for us. Someone has rightfully said that we become what it is we fear. In other words, what he's saying is what we choose to fear will motivate us to be moved towards, to conform to whatever that thing is that wants it wants us to be. God has expectations for us. And if we fear the Lord, we will be moved to follow those expectations. If we fear others, we will be moved to follow their expectations. If we fear society uh, or the things that could happen to us in society, we'll be moved to follow uh, what it is society tells us to do. But here, the writer is telling us that there is something we need to fear. Now, he mentions what it is. He says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. In other words, what he's saying is this, we need to be very much aware of what God's promises are toward us, and we need to be very much aware of how to fulfill those promises, and we need to be very much aware of whether or not we are or have fulfilled God's expectations for us. He says in verse 2, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. And there it is. There's the crux of what he's trying to say. God has given us great promises. God has told us what his expectation is for those promises. And we need to be very much aware, consciously, consciously aware. We need to choose to fear so that we do not miss out on those promises. Now, the promise mentioned here is the gospel. What is the gospel? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel? It's the good news that our sins have been taken care of by Christ on the cross. But that good news has mixed with it that news of the fact that we have sinned and we have come short of God's glory and perfection, and that our sin requires a punishment and our payment for that sin. If we're not aware of that, or if we choose to ignore that, we choose not to fear missing out on that promise, then no matter how that word is preached to us, we will choose not to have faith in it. So that's why he's saying here, we need to be afraid or at least fear that we do not miss out on that promise. How do we not miss it? Through faith. 
through faith. The word preached did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith in them that heard it. So if it's to profit us, it must be mixed with faith. With faith. That's the first let us. So let us be aware. Are you aware today of what it is God's promise is toward you? Are you aware today of what it is God's expectation is toward you? And are you aware today of whether or not you have or are fulfilling God's expectation? That is what he is trying to say here in Hebrews uh, chapter number four and verse number one. There is a healthy kind of fear that we can have, a fear toward God that moves us to want and desire to fulfill what God's expectations are for us. That does bring us to that second let us in the book of Hebrews chapter number four and uh, verse number 11. Paul, or the writer of Hebrews rather, I tend to think it's Paul, but it may not be. The writer of Hebrews tells us here in Hebrews chapter number four, verse number 11, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. And all he's saying there, all the writer is saying there is we need to be very much aware and we need to strive if as much as we possibly can to ensure that we have fulfilled God's expectation to gain eternal life. We must not be complacent about it. We must not uh, just cast it off as though it is unimportant. We need to be very much aware of it. We must fear not gaining it, and we should do what we can to enter into the rest, that is, eternal life, uh, that, that God has promised us. Now, there is no work that we can do to gain eternal life. There's no good work we can do. There's not enough good work to do that we can do. The only thing we can do to gain that rest is have faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in his uh, death on the cross, faith in his resurrection, death for our sin and resurrection uh, for our redemption. So this morning I ask, or today I ask, have you placed your faith in Christ? Are you trusting in him? Are you aware of God's promise? Are you aware of his expectation? And are you aware of the fulfillment of it? God bless you. We will see you all again very soon.